Our study today is entitled 1844, September 23 or October 22. In our study 1844, A Date with Destiny, we have proved from scripture and history that 1844 AD was the precise year when the 2300 days or years prophecy of Daniel 8:14 ended. It was in 1844 AD the cleansing of the heavenly sanctuary began. The cleansing of the heavenly sanctuary is nothing but the beginning of the investigative judgment in heaven. For more details on this, kindly watch my presentation 1844 Cleansing of the Heavenly Sanctuary. We have seen in our presentation your trial in the highest court. It is in the solemn feast of the day of atonement the cleansing of the sanctuary took place. In this presentation we will determine the exact date when the heavenly judgment commenced in 1844 when was the day of atonement in the hebrew calendar in leviticus 23:27 we read on the 10th day of this 7th month there shall be a day of atonement we need to remember that the 7th month mentioned here is not july the 7th month in our present gregorian calendar but this is the 7th month in the jewish calendar God told Moses in Deuteronomy 16:1, "Observe the month of Habib and keep the Passover unto the Lord thy God, for in the month of Habib the Lord thy God brought thee forth out of the land out of Egypt by night." God also said in Exodus 12:2, "This month shall be unto you the beginning of months; it shall be the first month of the year to you." The first month in the religious year was the month of Habib also called Nisan. In this chart you can see that Nisan also called Habib is the first month and it corresponds to March or April in the Gregorian calendar that we use today. That is why Good Friday which is supposed to be during the Passover time is always during the time of March end or April beginning. The seventh month is Tishri which corresponds to September or October in the Gregorian calendar. The day of atonement is on the 10th day of the 7th month and it comes sometime in the month of September or October in our Gregorian calendar so it is around this time September October Christ began his work in the most holy place of the heavenly sanctuary we will determine when exactly it happened in this presentation The fulfillment of the prophecies were not just the exact year to the exact year but to the exact date as well. We need to remember the Jewish feast and the details of it were all a shadow of what Christ would do in the plan of salvation. Not just the work of the Messiah was foretold in those feast days but the precise dates were given as well because they too were meant to fit. Regarding the Passover feast we are told in Leviticus 23:5 in the 14th day of the first month that even is the Lord's Passover did Jesus die on the exact day of the Passover feast yes he did Jesus himself said in Matthew 26 and verse 2 he know that after 2 days is the feast of the Passover and the son of man is betrayed to be crucified Apostle Paul also wrote in 1 Corinthians 5:7 for even Christ our Passover is sacrifice for us At the precise moment the time of the evening sacrifice which is 3 o'clock in the afternoon Jesus died when the Passover lamb had to be slain The next day after the Passover was the ceremonial sabbath of the feast of the unleavened bread after this ceremonial sabbath the next day that is on the 16th of that month was the feast of the first fruits Leviticus 23 10 and 11 he shall bring a sheaf of the first fruits of your harvest unto the priest and he shall wave the sheaf before the Lord to be accepted for you on the morrow after the sabbath the priest shall wave it the first fruits feast foreshadowed the resurrection of Jesus which happened exactly on the 16th of the first Jewish month as foretold Paul wrote in 1 Corinthians 15:20 but now is Christ risen from the dead and become the first fruits of them that slept So the first fruits is about Christ risen it's about his resurrection for more details on this kindly watch my presentation crucifixion Wednesday or Friday 
within 50 days after the first fruits was a feast of weeks or Pentecost. Moses wrote in Leviticus 23, 15 and 16, From the day that he brought the sheaf of the wave offering, seven Sabbaths shall he complete. Even unto the morrow after the seven Sabbaths shall he number fifty days, and he shall offer a new meat offering unto the Lord. The sixteenth of that month, the first fruits, the wave sheaf was presented in the temple. Jesus fulfilled that even when he rose on that very day as prophesied as we just saw. From that point, from the day that he brought the first fruit, shall he number 50 days the bible says that brings us to pentecost or the feast of weeks the word pentecost comes from the greek word pentecosti which means 50th the old testament uses the phrase feast of weeks for this 50th day feast in deuteronomy 16 10 we read and thou shalt keep the feast of weeks unto the lord thy god the New Testament uses the word Pentecost in Acts 2.1 we read, And when the day of Pentecost was fully come. Two things happened on the day of Pentecost. One happened on earth and the other happened in heaven. On earth, the Holy Spirit came down on the disciples. This marked the beginning of the New Testament church. We read in Acts 2 verses 1 and 4, And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place, and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. What time did the Holy Spirit come down? We are told in Acts 2.15, the third hour of the day. This is the third Jewish hour, which is 9 a.m. our time. This was the time of the morning sacrifice in the temple. Also, we are told about the timing of Jesus' crucifixion in Mark 15, 25, and it was the third hour and they crucified him. Beloved, we clearly see not just the dates were precise in its fulfillment, but the timing as well was spot on. And Jesus died at the ninth hour, which was a time, precise time of the evening sacrifice in the temple. While on earth the Holy Spirit came down at the precise date and time of Pentecost, what happened in heaven at this time? On the day of Pentecost, Peter said to the people about what Jesus was doing up there. He said in Acts 2, 33, Therefore, being by the right hand of God exalted and having received of the Father the promise of the Holy Ghost, he hath shed forth this which ye now see and hear. Yes, beloved, Jesus sent the Holy Ghost when, when he went to the right hand of God. This phrase, sitting at God's right hand, is an expression of Jesus being a priest in the heavenly sanctuary. The psalmist wrote about this event. In Psalm 110, 1 and 4, we read, The Lord said unto my Lord, Sit thou at my right hand, thou art a priest. So to sit at God's right hand means Jesus became a priest at that point of time. In the New Testament also we see this confirmed by Apostle Paul in Hebrews 8, 1 and 2. We have such an high priest who is set on the right hand of the throne of the majesty in the heavens, a minister of the sanctuary and of the true tabernacle with the Lord pitched and not man. So when Peter said that Jesus sat at the right hand of God and sent the Holy Spirit, we understand at this point of time, Christ commenced his heavenly sanctuary work as the high priest. When Christ began his work in the holy place of the heavenly temple, the Holy Spirit began his work on earth with the church and through the church. The timing of Jesus starting his work in the holy place of the heavenly sanctuary was precise according to prophecy on the day of Pentecost. Pentecost. And on the day of Pentecost at the third hour or 9 a.m. Jewish time, Christ took over as high priest in the holy place of the heavenly temple. Before we find out which was the exact date of the Feast of Atonement in 1844, we will first look at the two sects of Jews that existed from early times, the Rabbinic Judaism and the Karite Judaism. Just like in the New Testament time, there were two distinct sects of Jews. Remember the Pharisees and the Sadducees? 
they developed also two distinct sects of Jews, the Rabbinical Jews and the Karai Jews for the last 2,000 years. Rabbinic Judaism, also called Rabbinism or Rabbinicism or Judaism as posed by the Rabbinites, has been the mainstream form of Judaism since the 6th century AD. On the other hand, the sect of the Karai Jews, it is said, they were the remnant of the Sadducees of the 1st century sect that followed the Hebrew Bible literally and rejected the Pharisees' notion of an oral Torah. It was toward the end of the 8th century AD. This back to the Torah moment in Judaism arose in opposition to the Rabbanite Judaism. It is called Karaism or they were called the Karite Jews. The golden age of the Karite movement lasted from the end of the 10th century to the beginning of the 11th century when the Karite communities appeared throughout the Middle East, the Byzantine Empire and North Africa to name a few. According to different estimates, around 30 to 40 percent of the Jewish population at that time followed the Karite movement and their calendar. What is the difference between the Rabbinic Judaism and Karaite Judaism? The Rabbinites followed the traditions of the Talmud in addition to their scriptures. The Karaites abandoned all such traditions and just went with the Torah. This necessitated deferring from other Jews in the manner in which they kept their calendar and this meant they often kept the festivals in different months than the rabbinic Jews did. Now we will look at the different calendars that are used by the Abrahamic religion. The Gregorian calendar which we use today is a solar based calendar. They just count the number of days the earth takes to revolve around the sun once and it takes around 365.25 days. Since we don't have a quarter day in the calendar, it is rounded down to 365 days a year and every fourth year called the leap year, one full day is added to make up for the 0.25 days that were left out. The Muslims, on the other hand, have a lunar calendar for their religious purposes. They just count the number of days it takes for the moon to revolve around the earth once. From one new moon to the next, it takes around 29.5 days. So you can see in their religious calendar, the days are 29 or 30 days each month. So 12 lunar months would add up to 354 days, which is about 11 days short of the solar year of 365 days. So every year, their feast days falls around 11 days backward because their religious calendar is only based on the phases of the moon. That is why you see here, as given in the chart, Bakri in 2019 was on 11th of August, but in 2020, the same feast was on the 30th of July, and in 2021, it was on 20th of July. So in 33 years, they fall behind 363 days, which brings them almost where they were 33 years back with the seasons of the year. So in the year 2054 AD, Bakrid will fall very close to July 20 as it is this year. The Jewish calendar is computed with a combination of both solar and lunar cycles. Like the Muslim calendar, they begin their month in the new moon and have 29 and 30 days alternating most of the time for the 12 months of the year. So 12 lunar months would add up to 354 days, which is about 11 days short of the solar year, which is 365 days. The Jewish calendar uses an intercalary month that is adding an extra month. Every second or third year, they add the 13th month to the calendar. The 12th month is called Adar and the 13th month is called Adar too. In a 19 year cycle, they would have added 13th month a total of seven times to their calendar. And every 19 years, they almost synchronized where they were to the very date 19 years back. The Gregorian calendar that we use today also adds an extra day in February every fourth year, don't they? And that year is called the leap year. 
So this intercalary that is adding a day or a month in the calendar is an age-old practice to keep up with the seasons of the year. The Jews and Muslims begin their months when the new crescent moon is first visible. This may occur whether permitting 18 hours or more after the astronomical new moon. Sightings are attempted soon after sunset. If the new crescent is large enough and is far away from the setting sun and at the right angle, then it will be seen and the new month will be declared to have begun. Another important criterion in determining the first month for the Jews in the Bible times was the ripening of the barley during the month of Habib. Moses wrote about the feast of the first fruits in Leviticus 23.10. Speak unto the children of Israel and say unto them, When he come into the land which I give unto you, and he shall reap the harvest thereof, then shall he bring a sheaf of the first fruits of your harvest unto the priest. We have seen earlier in this presentation that the first fruit was on the 16th day of the first month, two days after the Passover. Now this is fantastic system that God gave the Jews to connect the first month of the year to the harvest of the field. Remember the harvest of the field synchronizes with the seasons of the year, the solar cycle. So the Jewish months, though they were lunar months, God made sure the year was completed based on the solar cycle through these feast days which were harvest centered. God brought the children of Israel out of Egypt on the day of the Passover, the 14th day of the first month. So we can expect the barley harvest was ready for harvest around this time. But before God delivered them from Egypt, God sent 10 plagues on the land of Egypt. The Bible says in Exodus 19, 31 and 20, 32, And the flax and the barley was smitten, for the barley was in the year, and the flax was bald, and the wheat and the rye were not smitten, for they were not grown up. So, we have the evidence from scripture that the barley was ripe during the time of the Passover, but the wheat was not grown up yet at this time. They would be ready for another feast, the wheat, the feast of the weeks, the Pentecost, which would come 50 days after the first fruits of the barley, as we have seen earlier. The scripture says in Exodus 34, 22, and thou shalt observe the feast of weeks of the first fruits of wheat harvest. So you clearly see the feasts that came during the different lunar months were tied to the harvest of the field. Since 12 lunar months of 29.5 days would be 354 days, 11 days short of the solar year of 365 days, the adding of an extra month, the second Adar, at the end of the year, every second or third year, was not pre-planned, but it was done after watching the harvest of the field. Towards the end of the 12th month, the month of Adar, there was a team of experts who went to the barley field to see if the barley would be ripened in another 15 days time because the priest had to wave it during the first fruits festival, the barley harvest on the 16th of the first month. Normally, the barley takes between 60 to 70 days to ripen after planting. It all depended on the weather conditions too. Also, it depended when exactly it was planted, again, on the weather conditions. If they determined that during the year end, the barley would be ready in another 15 days time, then they would not add an intercalary month or the extra month to the old year. But if they determined the barley was still young and would not be ready for harvesting in 15 days time, then they would add an extra month, the 13th month to the old year. This is how it was done in the Bible times. Here is a quotation from the Encyclopedia Britannica from the article about the Jewish calendar which confirms two things. The crescent moon as the beginning of the Jewish month and the timing of the barley harvest as the beginning of the first month. I quote, in the religious calendar, the commencement of the month was determined by the observation of the crescent new moon and the date of the Passover was tied 
in with the ripening of barley the actual eye witnessing of the new moon and observing of the stand of crops in judea were required for the functioning of the religious calendar uncalled dear friends up until the 2nd century AD the rabbinic judaism added the intercalary months in such a way that there was always ripe barley for passover after that point they relied solely on the mathematical calculations tied to the equinox an equinox is the instant of time when the plane of the earth's equator passes through the geometric center of the sun's disk in other words it's the moment at which the center of the visible sun is directly above the equator now this occurs twice each year around 20th march and 23rd september by determining the passover this way based on the precise moment of the earth around the sun they totally disregarded whether the barley was ripe or not thus the rabbinic jews were not following the scriptures in the matter of deciding when the new year would begin the first month toward the end of the 8th century AD a back to the bible moment in judaism arose in opposition to the rabbinite judaism on many counts including when the starting month of the religious calendar should be this meant that the two groups of jews the rabbinical jews and the karite jews were keeping the feasts on different months these karite jews counted the beginning of the month just as the bible commanded based on the barley harvest as all the jews did from the time of moses to the 2nd century ad they were in the minority compared to the rabbinical jews as time passed by now we will find out in 1844 ad what was the exact day of the day of atonement september 23 or october 22 Remember the first month according to the Bible was to be determined on the barley harvest and not on the equinox the rabbinical Jews who were in the majority observed the day of atonement on September 23 1844 as shown earlier they determined the beginning of the year solely on the mathematical calculations tied to the equinox they did not consider the biblical instructions of the barley harvest to determine which was the first month but the karite jews observed the day of atonement on october 22 in the year 1844 ad based on bible reckoning of the jewish months which was connected to the harvest of the field also since the temple of jerusalem was destroyed in ad 70 and there have never been a temple earthly temple ever since presenting a barley harvest in the temple by the priests became a non-functional matter so these majorities of jews did not follow the seasons based on the harvest but only looked at the solar cycle as we conclude in 1844 was it september 23 the biblical day of atonement or was it october 22 it was october 22 indeed in the year 1844 based on scripture and not on tradition so beloved it was on october 22 1844 ad christ stepped into the most holy place of the heavenly sanctuary on the real day of atonement as per scripture to begin the solemn work of the cleansing of the sanctuary the work of judgment that's about 1844 september 23 or october 22 thank you and god bless